Just imagine, the year is 2026, and the whole world is watching Tesla with a mixture of surprise and anxiety. After all, it was at this moment that it became clear that the white gold of recent years, lithium, had become a huge burden for the automotive industry. Prices simply skyrocketed, rising over 500% in a short period of time. For those who follow this sector, it seemed surreal. How could a resource once seen as the salvation for electric cars have become a nearly insurmountable obstacle? Elon Musk himself had already warned that lithium was becoming too expensive and, worse, increasingly difficult to find in sufficient quantities to sustain global demand. Interestingly, even with all this instability, lithium-ion batteries continued to be treated as the industry's gold standard. Traditional automakers persisted in this path, even as costs rose month after month. But Tesla, always keen to challenge convention, was already preparing to turn things around. The market spoke of a crisis, but Musk saw an opportunity. He knew it made no sense to remain hostage to such a limited and expensive material. And it was precisely in this context that the discussion of new alternatives began to gain momentum within the company. After all, when you look at the present, you realize that the reality of lithium-ion batteries is far less glamorous than it seemed on paper. Yes, they changed the industry and kick-started the electric revolution, but they came with high costs, safety limitations, and a dangerous geopolitical dependence. The most emblematic case within Tesla itself was the famous 46 and 80 batteries, which still contained lithium, nickel, and even cobalt. Elon Musk even admitted that, initially, producing these cells in-house was even more expensive than buying them from external suppliers. This not only hampered the ambition to make existing models cheaper, but also stalled the long-promised $25,000 car. For Tesla fans, this delay was almost torture. For four years, the announcement of this affordable car was repeatedly postponed, and the explanation always revolved around the same issue – battery costs. After all, there's no point in wanting to deliver a cheap car when its heart, the battery, costs more than it should. The dependence on lithium became a kind of cage, stalling projects and preventing the dream of a popular Tesla from becoming a reality. And all this in a scenario where Chinese competitors were already beginning to offer more affordable models, putting even more pressure on the game. And it's at this precise point that the story begins to take on revolutionary overtones. The public was accustomed to hearing about software advances, autonomous cars, and futuristic designs, but no one expected the big change to come from something that seemed to be already established – batteries. Elon Musk had already said in interviews that the lithium crisis wasn't just a question of price, but of access. The concentration of reserves in a few countries turned battery production into a global power play where Tesla didn't have complete control. And, let's face it, relying on political decisions and mining in unstable regions was never the company's style. The turning point seemed improbable to many, but by 2026, it was already becoming inevitable. After years of betting everything on lithium, Tesla finally revealed to the world that its future was no longer tied to this rare metal, but to aluminum, an element that had always been there, abundant, accessible, and affordable. The news came as a shock to the industry, because until then, aluminum had been seen only as a structural material for cars, planes, and even soda cans, not as the energetic heart of an electric revolution. And it was precisely this obvious that Elon Musk decided to transform into a strategic weapon to free Tesla from the burden of lithium. What left many speechless was the scale of the plan. This wasn't a laboratory experiment, nor a prototype battery shown at technology fairs. Tesla was preparing large-scale production lines designed to manufacture aluminum-ion batteries in Nevada, USA, as early as 2026. This meant that, in a very short time, 
Cars equipped with this new technology would be rolling out of the factories, ready for the road. The promise wasn't just to swap one metal for another, but to usher in a new chapter in electric mobility. Aluminum's greatest asset lay not only in its abundance, but also in the security and stability it brought to the supply chain. While lithium was concentrated in a few countries and subject to trade wars and political instability, aluminum was spread across the planet in gigantic reserves. It is estimated to be 18 times more abundant than lithium in the Earth's crust, making a global shortage virtually impossible to imagine. This simple detail already drastically reduced the risks of relying on strategic suppliers. Another factor that gained prominence was the elimination of other problematic materials, such as cobalt and nickel. Those who follow the industry know that these elements not only increase the price of batteries, but also raise environmental and humanitarian controversies linked to mining in unstable countries. Aluminum, on the other hand, is already widely processed on a global scale, with established infrastructure and predictable costs. This put Tesla in an advantageous position, as it could manufacture its batteries without being held hostage by volatile markets or accusations of predatory practices. The curious thing is that this change seemed so obvious that many wondered why no one had done it before. After all, aluminum has always been present in our daily lives, from packaging to power cables. But the difficulty lay in the chemistry in transforming this metal into something capable of competing in efficiency with lithium. It was at this point that Tesla engineers surprised everyone. They managed to develop cells that harness the potential of aluminum in an architecture that is efficient, safe, and, above all, scalable to millions of vehicles. And for those who thought this was just a marketing ploy, they only had to look at the numbers and projections. Musk firmly stated that the transition to aluminum wouldn't just be an alternative, but the new standard. Unlike lithium, which was already showing signs of exhaustion, aluminum offered a glimpse into a long-term future where costs wouldn't be subject to speculation. This alone sent a clear message. Tesla wasn't just creating a better battery, it was paving the way for electric cars to finally be affordable on a mass scale. This is where the revolution truly begins to unfold, the chemical and performance advantages of aluminum are simply impressive. Unlike lithium, each aluminum ion carries three times more electrical charge, which completely changes the way we think about energy density. This means that in practice, an aluminum battery can store much more energy in the same physical space occupied by a lithium battery. And when it comes to electric cars, every cubic centimeter counts because this is what determines the vehicle's range weight, and even design. Imagine a Tesla with the same battery size, but offering twice the range. It sounds like science fiction, but by 2026, it was already on its way to becoming reality. The most striking statistic was the 600 Dodwood 61 energy density achieved in practical tests. While lithium had been stuck at the theoretical limit of 250 Dodwood for decades. For those unfamiliar with technical numbers, just think of it this way. If a Model Y long range currently achieves a little over 350 miles of range with the aluminum battery, that same car could reach 1,000 miles or over 1,600 kilometers on a single charge. It's the kind of leap that completely redefines the perception of an electric car. The fear of range, which has always been a specter of EVs, simply vanishes when faced with such an absurd number. This advantage doesn't stop at range alone. When energy density increases, the battery itself becomes lighter because less material is needed to generate the same amount of energy. And less weight means cars that are more agile, more efficient, and even cheaper to manufacture. It's a ripple effect that goes beyond the simple number of miles per charge. Weight reduction improves aerodynamics, increases interior space, and even allows for new design possibilities. It's as if aluminum is opening the door to a new generation of vehicles with the freedom to push beyond current limits. It's curious to note how, for years, lithium batteries were treated as if they were at the pinnacle of their evolution. Improvements came in small increments, 
a slightly faster charge here, a slight increase in battery life there, but always within the same limited scope. Aluminum, on the other hand, emerged as a breakthrough, almost a quantum leap. And this sense of leap is what's most intriguing. The idea that we were stuck for so long with a technology that no longer delivered what it promised. Many experts argued that this transition resembled the leap that occurred when cell phones switched from nickel to lithium batteries. Suddenly, devices became lighter, lasted longer, and enabled the entire smartphone revolution. Now, the analogy was repeated in cars. Switching from lithium to aluminum could be the same turning point that would make EVs truly dominant, eliminating unfavorable comparisons with combustion vehicles once and for all. It's as if we're about to experience the automotive industry's iPhone moment all over again. When the topic turned to safety and durability, the comparison between lithium and aluminum became even more evident. Those who follow the automotive industry have become accustomed to hearing news of electric cars catching fire or even cell phones exploding. And the culprit behind these incidents was almost always the same, lithium ion batteries. The problem lay in the formation of the notorious dendrites, small metallic needles that grow during the charging process and can penetrate the battery's internal separator, causing short circuits and even fires. The risk of failure was so great that companies invested billions in control systems, sensors, and sophisticated software just to minimize these dangers. With aluminum, this scenario changed radically. Studies conducted at universities like Stanford showed that, unlike lithium, aluminum ions move much more uniformly within the battery, virtually eliminating dendrite formation. This characteristic alone greatly reduced the chances of explosions and catastrophic failures. For the average consumer, this means greater confidence in parking their car in the garage without fear of seeing smoke coming from the hood or having their vehicle involved in a fire reported on TV. Another impressive aspect was the battery's durability. While a lithium battery typically lasts about 2,000 recharge cycles before dropping to 80% capacity, aluminum batteries can surpass 10,000 cycles without experiencing significant declines. In practical terms, we're talking about batteries capable of lasting up to 30 years with regular use. This means that, in many cases, the car would reach the end of its useful life with the battery still in good condition, something unthinkable in the current model. This durability also brought a new perspective to the used car market. Until now, one of the biggest concerns for those buying a second-hand electric car was precisely the condition of the battery, as the cost of replacing it is extremely high. With aluminum, this concern almost completely disappears. This could further boost the used electric car market, making them accessible to a much wider audience. Another interesting detail is aluminum's chemical stability compared to lithium. While lithium reacts violently with oxygen and water, aluminum creates a natural oxide layer that protects the material from corrosion. This chemical behavior gives batteries an extra level of safety against leaks and unexpected reactions. It's as if the very nature of aluminum were tailored to offer reliability in large-scale applications. If there was one point where consumers always criticized electric cars, it was charging time. No one likes waiting half an hour or more to fill up their battery when they're used to spending just a few minutes at a gas station. And it was precisely here, in 2026, that aluminum showed one of its biggest aces up its sleeve. While lithium batteries took an average of 25 to 35 minutes to reach 80% charge, the new aluminum ones could be fully charged in just 15 minutes. Yes, 15 minutes to get a thousand mile range out of the car. That number seemed nearly impossible a few years ago, but now it was real and already leaving the public speechless. The difference wasn't just in the waiting time, but also in the smoothness of the process. Anyone who's ever seen or read about lithium batteries overheating at charging stations knows this was a constant concern. Aluminum, however, proved much more efficient at handling heat. Ions move up to three times faster 
within the electrolyte, and this fluidity drastically reduces excessive heat generation. The result is fast, safe charging without the fire risks that so worried electric vehicle owners. This advancement has direct implications for everyday life. Imagine the scene. You park your car, plug it in, have a coffee, exchange a few words with someone, and when you look at your watch, the car is ready to go. It's an experience that brings electric vehicles even closer to the practicality of combustion-powered cars, but with the advantage of not emitting polluting gases or relying on petroleum. For many drivers, this was a true turning point because it eliminates the main criticism of electric transportation. Another important detail is that this charging time didn't depend on special ultra-powerful stations. Of course, the most modern ones offered superior performance, but even in existing networks, the gains were notable. This means that widespread adoption wouldn't require a complete infrastructure overhaul, something that has always been cited as a barrier to EVs. Aluminum already fit what was already installed, making the transition much smoother. And if the thousand mile range was already a shock, when combined with ultra-fast charging, the result seemed like something out of a science fiction film. Drivers no longer needed to plan entire trips around charging stops. Mobility became freer, and the anxiety of running out of battery in the middle of the road became a distant memory. This psychological factor of trust is as important as the technical numbers. If there's one thing that always bothered those who dreamed of owning an electric car, it was the price. As much as EVs offered long-term savings, the initial cost still put many people off. And the reason for this was simple. Lithium batteries. They represented the most expensive part of the entire vehicle, costing almost a third of the final price. To give you an idea, a 63 kWh pack, like the one in a Model 3, cost in the range of $6,300 to $6,500 for the battery alone. And that's not to mention the additional costs of materials like cobalt and nickel, which made everything even more expensive. With the arrival of aluminum, this burden on the wallet began to fade. The cost per kilowatt hour dropped to between $15 and $25 IDAL, compared to $55 and $100 for lithium. This meant that the same 63 kilodollar battery could be manufactured for around $2,000. It's a brutal drop, almost halving the cost of the most expensive component in an electric car. And when you do this calculation at a production scale, the difference is enormous. It's as if, suddenly, it were possible to deliver much more affordable cars without sacrificing profit margins. This price impact paved the way for the long-promised $25,000 Tesla to finally be more than just a distant announcement. Now, with a cheaper battery, the dream of putting millions of people behind the wheel of a long-range EV was within reach. And not only that, existing models, like the Model Y and Model 3, could have more affordable versions, breaking down the barrier that still kept many consumers preferring combustion-powered options or Chinese competitors. Another fascinating aspect is that this cost reduction didn't just come from the raw material. The aluminum production chain is already consolidated worldwide. Unlike lithium, which requires complex extraction and refining, aluminum has a ready and scalable infrastructure. This cuts logistical costs, simplifies the manufacturing process, and provides much greater security in terms of supply. It's as if Tesla had found a gold mine in its own backyard. And what makes it all even more interesting is the combination of low cost and superior performance. Typically, when we talk about reducing price, we immediately think of a loss of quality. But in the case of aluminum, it was just the opposite. Greater autonomy, greater durability, greater safety, and even lower cost. It's one of those rare moments when technology and economics align almost perfectly. Even with all the advancements and revolutionary promises, aluminum still had its obstacles in its path. 